want to introduce yourself? Thank you very much, and then we welcome you all. You can see that we have a very powerful team before us. The nurses and midwife council, likewise the medical and dental council. So we are we are very safe in this room, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and then honorable members, uh, the chairman, medical and dental council, likewise the register and chairman of the nurses and midwife council. You are welcome to our today's meeting. This is the National Assembly Select Committee on Health that is established by Section 109 of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. And then the Constitution also empowers us and then it also establishes committees with the general mandate to inquire into government activities or administration of ministries or departments of the government. Committees also may investigate or inquire into any matter of public importance. The Select Committee on Health, Refugees, Disaster, and Humanitarian Relief was established by a resolution of the National Assembly in the sixth legislature. The committee has, a general, has the general mandate to examine such powers within its remits as it may determine appropriate or refer to it by the Assembly. And in this case, on the 26th of October 2022, a resolution was made at the floor of the National Assembly. Uh, giving the select committee the mandate to conduct a parliamentary inquiry into the unfortunate death of 66 plus Gambian children. And uh, we found you to be one of the stakeholders and then we've written to your esteemed offices. Though we've got reply from the medical and dental council, but we have not received any reply from the nurses and midwife council. But just to let you know, our terms of references are the select committee seeks to inquire and establish the cause and the impact of the AKI on the children of the Gambia, and in particular, A, the root cause of the reported death of at least 70 children, B, the effects of the contaminated medical syrups link linked to the deaths, C, the access to primary health care services on emergency cases established especially for children, D, the culpability of the suspected importers and pharmacists linked to the contaminated drugs, E, the impact of access to and availability of medical drugs, especially for children, has on emergency health services, F, the effects of the prevailing legislations, the Pharmacy Council, Medicine Control Agency on the pharmacy, licensing, and medical, medical regime of the country, G, to consider proposal for a review of the legal and regulatory framework. Uh, governing the pharmacy, drugs, importation and store and licensing administration. H, how the pharmacy licensing scheme is administered in the Gambia. I, the effectiveness of the current measures being undertaken by the Ministry of Health to address the AKI cases and contaminated medical drugs. J, to draw, to draw on other international best practices and protocols, possible strategies, initiatives and actions that the Ministry of Health should consider in addressing the administration and impact of the medical importation and k any other related matter as far as this inquiry is concerned the terms of references might not be relevant all of them might not be relevant to your uh, set offices but just pick the ones which you know that that relate to your portfolio offices and we discuss on them but before going further we are in receipt of a communication from the yeah. medical and dental council which reads, honorable members, for your attention, the Medical and Dental Council, Republic of the Gambia, reference number MDCG slash 763 slash 2022, and then it is addressed to the Office of the Clerks as usual. And the reply is for a notice to reply the letter that was sent to them, notice of someone. A reference is invited to your communication reference number ME, that is the letter that was sent to them by from the National Assembly, ME 19 slash five four slash zero three of October first twenty twenty two receive on sec sorry receive on second November 
this would have been first November. Vicky is received on the second November 2022 requesting for our position paper and case management on the acute kidney injury cases by the Select Committee on Health, Women, Children, Disaster, Humanitarian Relief and Refugees. It is important to note that the Medical and Dental Council of the Gambia, MDCG, is a statutory body established by the Medical and Dental Practitioners Act 1988 Laws of the Gambia and charged with the responsibility to regulate the profession and practice of medicine and density in the Gambia and matters there with con connected to it. In this context, the MDCG wishes to submit that it has no position paper and case management on the AKI cases as it fails as it falls outside its mandate. <coughs> Yours sincerely, Dr. <coughs> Melvin George, Chairman, the Medical and Dental Council. So that's the communication we received from the Medical and Dental Council. Honorable members, for your attention. For the Nurses and Midwife Council, we have not received any communication from them. But probably before we hear from them, we have to do our necessary uh, procedure and processes, it is important to also inform you as our esteemed tech stakeholders, part of our procedures and processes in the National Assembly. If we invite witnesses, this is guided by our standing orders, you have to take uh, out of out of, out of you have to take oaths or you do an affirmation to, to give you the right to be able to speak before the National Assembly. This is established. This is an established practice, and it is established by our own uh, rules of procedure here, and by our own standing orders, which is the law governing our rules of procedure here. So, on that note, I will just ask the secretary to administer the oath or give them the uh, affirmation for it by themselves. Whosoever is speaking from the medical and dental council, maybe if only one of you is going to take the floor, that that person only can they make the affirmation, but if it is both of you, you have to do so, and likewise the nurses and midwife council. Thank you. You can do that. Yes, stand and just raise your, <coughs> raise your right hand. I, Dr. Muhammadu Kabir Cham, do hereby affirm that I will speak the truth the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me Allah. Thank you. Suffice. Can yes, you can you can also do it for them. But you don't know who's gonna speak about it. Maybe the chairman. I Thank you. May Allah be with you. So we, we, we take it that the chairman for the Medical and Dental Council and that of the Nurses Council will be speaking on behalf of your respective institutions. Thank you. It's noted. So thank you very much. Before moving further, let's hear from, briefly, let's hear from the, uh, the chairman of the Nursing and Midwife Council. The reason why we don't receive any communication from, from your office. Position paper, that is the position paper. You can please help us move the mic. Move mic. Oh. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us uh, to the National Assembly. Um, with reference to the letter, uh, my attention was called to, uh, to read just yesterday when I was on my way home. And uh, we were, I was uh, told by the de deputy registrar that we are uh, asked to report here today. So um, that was just the telephone information that I had. And uh, the content of the letter, you know, is and was not definitely intimated to me. So that's the situation. So let's, uh, well, uh, I don't know from the level of the office uh, when they received the letter, maybe he should be able to uh, brief the honorable members here about that, if that is acceptable. Thank you. Yeah, if 
that is to be then you also have to make the affirmation so that you can also hear from him okay can you help me please help us again so that we can hear from him we know where the what, what led to this so that we can learn from it and possibly maybe take action I, Alasana Dabo, do hereby affirm that I will speak the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me Allah. Thank you. Yes, you can explain also. I think... Um, for the whole of last week, uh, I was away at NACA for a meeting uh, that was on a Tuesday. On Wednesday, uh, I had lectures at Iowa University, West Africa. Uh, when I came on Thursday, the secretary told me that um, we had a letter from the National Assembly asking the Norse and Midwife Council to write a position paper on Aki. Uh, I told her, uh, you received the letter today. She told me yes. And tomorrow should be the submission date. That was on the third. I re we received the letter on the second. The, on the third, you are supposed to reply. We thought this is going to be an official letter. So you don't have to rush it. I told her maybe they will call us for a meeting. And in fact, I was the only one in the office. My boss the registrar traveled with the wife to India. The registration officer is on leave. So I'm, I'm the only one in the office. I thought maybe they will call us a meeting. But for our position paper on Aki, I thought that was outside our mandate. Our mandate is regulation. We regulate the practice and education of nurses and midwives in this co country. So having to you know, write a position paper on Aki, I think that would, that would, that would not be um, right on our side. Yes, that's, that's, that is it. Th thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, I think we all heard him. And then we take, we take it that <coughs> that is your position. But what should have been done? If you write officially in this regard, like I don't, I don't want to preempt the discussion on the, on the side of the medical and dental council, but just like they did, because it's it's more or less like the same okay. that you are driving at. But you should have written officially. Then once you appear here today, you could have, we could we'll use the opportunity to discuss. I either excuse yourselves or we excuse you on that. Yeah, Thank you. So that's how it should have been done. But it's still not. You can do so. <coughs> you are. You have the whole of tomorrow. We can give you the whole of tomorrow to submit that. But in the meantime, today we'll just discuss briefly on that, okay. and we move on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you very much. Now we coming back to the medical and dental council. We'll start with them. Then we'll come to you. Thank you very much. Coming back to the medical and dental council. As I read earlier, that was the communication we received from you in response to our letter as indicated in your reference. So we want to hear from you, doctor. Then we, we, have, we want to hear from you. We discuss the content of your reply and probably you guide us better. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, honorable members. Um, first and foremost, just for procedure, the first letter which was sent to us was dated 1st of October. And we received it on the 2nd of November. And the deadline for submission was 3rd of November. That, that puts pressure. And that's why we had to send our response by email attachment to subsequently send you the hard copy. And actually, our response was dated 2nd of November. So this is 
honestly speaking, is on due pressure, on necessary pressure, on, on us, because there are other more pressing um, important activities. Coming to the subject matter, and the content of your letter is clear. Position paper, case management on AKI cases. That's not the remit of the Medical and Dental Council. The Medical and Dental Council established by the Medical and Dental Practitioners Act 1988 is basically responsible for the regulation of the profession and the practice of medicine and dentistry in this country. Basically looking at the training landscape of doctors and dentists. Practice, which will include, of course, their conduct. In terms of managing patients, managing cases, that's not our responsibility. The prima facie regulatory authorities professionally should be the medicines control agency which is charged with the responsibility of regulating the importation licensing of medicaments and the pharmacy council but for us nurses doctors midwives is the practice and the profession so this is why this is the remit um, of the content of our, um, our response to this letter. And uh, this was in response to the first letter. Then we received, second letter was dated on the 4th of November. And this was received on the 7th, which was yesterday, yes, today is the 8th dated 4th of November, yes, received on the 7th. Summoned Tuesday 8, 2.15, which is today. And of course, yes, uh, we have no other way to wriggle out but to respond to your, <laughs> to your in invitation, short of, short of being subpoenaed. <laughs> That's why we are here. And of course, the thinking was maybe um, your office did not receive our reply, but we took it upon ourselves in response to to really. And, and in fact, I sent I sent an email yesterday to Lamin, well, not is that so Lamin, but National Assembly and Clark. A, there are two emails. Yeah, there, this, this one. National Assembly 32 at Gmail. I sent an email trying again to explain um, the thinking around the position of the Medical and Dental Council. Um, so that's the situation. I'm available for further observations, queries, questions. But the prima facie responsibility, role, duty of the Medical and Dental Council as enshrined in the Act has nothing to do with, um, with this particular instance. Uh, let me hasten to add through the Chair that once we are here, after we've discussed AKI and whatever the outcome, uh, we will also crave your indulgence to present to you um, some of the challenges. I think you should know. I mean, when I say you should know, as a, a select committee on health, you know, some of the challenges in terms of us um, fulfilling our mandate efficiently and uh, effectively. Um, so. That's the hat I'm wearing as a registrar. Um, what I'm a seasoned health worker with half a century professional experience, both nationally and internationally. So if there is anything we want to 
to discuss outside this. I'm willing. Um, I'm a Gambian. It's my moral duty, uh, as, as I have been doing, uh, to contribute in whatever capacity I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Just by way of clarification, that is on your first point, I wanted to stop you, but I said, let me just allow you to learn. Probably there are some mistakes on the dates regarding the request. But for the records, any dispatch that is sent from Parliament to any institutions or organization on any subject matter is definitely an issue of national importance as you may all know. And then we can never invite anybody, even being it somebody on an on outside on any matter that we are investigating. If we deem it fitting, if we deem it necessary, we will always call and then we will always ask for evidence from you to hear from you. It does not sometimes necessarily have to mean it have to fall within your mandate. But sometimes we have to explore and if we can even go outside, we are permitted to do that do so. So it will definitely not be very, very, very fair, maybe. I think probably I may give you the opportunity to maybe reframe that, to say that maybe on unne unnecessary call or whatever. I think that was um, something which you know that I didn't believe if we are in at the plenary, I could have, we could have raised a point of order and tell you, can you please withdraw that? But all the same, and then we appreciate and then appreciate your efforts so far because you are press according to the communications but just know that we are working on a time frame and uh, this is an emergency situation that warranted us to even call for an extraordinary session so that's why everything have to be acted based on emergency and even in that there's a provision in the standing order that says if you request for documents in an emergency case within 24 hours it ha they have to be made available to whosoever that we request them request them from. So everything and anything that we are doing here is within the confines of our rules of procedure. So that 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 is it for that matter. And for the on the other side, that is on the issue of your post the position of the medical and dental council, honorable members and SMS, you've had them, you've had him. They have a case because as he said, whatever that they do is guided by the um, the Medical Practitioners Act of 1988, Laws of the Gambia, as they quoted in their communication. But uh, again, as he also concluded by saying, he's a, he's a seasoned practitioner. He's been in this field for quite a while. I can remember previously the previous committee we've engaged in. And then as a council, they have a lot of experienced people there. They have a lot of wisdoms within them, that I have to say. So we can always uh, use that opportunity to hear from them, yeah, from their side of the story. Not necessarily on Eki, if they have no issues, no connection or no relation to the subject matter under investigation, well, uh, the committee can make a decision on that, probably excuse them or we see what we do with them. Yeah, because we are doing an investigation and in an investigation we cannot compel, we, we, we can't, sorry, we can't compel somebody to produce evidence for us. But again, we have to be very, very reasonable with regards to the prevailing circumstances, with regards to the prevailing um, uh, laws that are available. So on that note, I will invite you to make opinion based on what he submitted so far before we <coughs> make a decision on that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, doctor, with reference to the demand we made, we understand that the Medical and Dental Council is more of a regulatory body. There is a season This is within the practice scope it happens. We feel it is very important to put you together so that we can come up with a solution and uh, a robust no approach man. that we tend to address this issue, even apart to the issue of the fee of lawyers. So in the matter of writing to the Medical and Dental Council asking for a case management, we will understand that a lot. But I believe the Medical and Dental has something to tell the Gambian people, has something to tell the National Assembly with regards to the, the process. 
and still he couldn't be able to practice. So when this medical occurrence happened, by virtue of your responsibility, you had something to say that. And that was at that scope, we still as a committee to write the medical and dental act. We are 100% sure because the 1988 act was an, a parliament act to empower new people to do the regulation. But this is a medical occurrence that we feel that your technical expertise, your advice, looking into the matter and being concerned and seizing health workers, at least you have a stake on this. That is the scope that uh, warranted this decision to come. And then, uh, because that was one part, we expect also to interact with the medical and dental services with the permission of the chair, because we feel there are other issues that we want to link. And the medical and dental council is a body regulating partners that we are dealing with. So it's very important that if issue of this condition happens, yes, they can equally advise to mark out. But we know primarily we understand the, the function of the, the council and all other councils. So thank you, Chair. <coughs> thank you very much, Honorable Mbalo. And we heard you. Just on the second part of your submission regarding our other engagement with the councils. Like I always said, Aki, eh, sorry, AKI came and then disrupted our entire modus operandi with regards to our engagement with our stakeholders. <coughs> because both the councils, being the medical, the pharmacy, medicine control, nurses, and so on, they all fall under our purview. And then it is our mandate to engage you have your annual activity reports, we review it together, come up with recommendations as for that, that we will table at the National <coughs> Assembly and then we can even make resolution out of that to make sure some of your challenges are addressed. That is our responsibility and that is our mandate. But this unfortunate mm. <laughs> in incident happened, so we have to deal with it before we even move on. If you look at our, at our plans, our committee uh, work plan, all this were schedules that we are captured to engage all these councils on median meetings, primary liaison meetings, then after later on we we'll invite you to submit your annual reports as usual as parliament normally do. But this is un very unfortunate so we capitalize on it in essence and then we move on. I know the engagement will not stop in this instant only. This is just an investigation. I know after this um, probably maybe by the by next year we will see how to how to maybe engage you further and we move on. Because this, this, this engagement is specifically only on these AKI issues. Yeah, sorry, I think, yeah. I think that's it. Um, Honorable Chair, thank you so much. Um, I also wanted to say the same opinion, given the fact that the Dental and Medical Council and the Nurses and Midwife yeah? Council, I, I think the, the, the subject here is about Aki. When Parliament you know, had a session, the resolution said, you identify stakeholders that you can meet and inquire. Inquiry in, in means you ask how it happens, how did it come, and what needs to be done. You understand? So if they are not linked to the subject matter, I think the committee can, of course, excuse them and then look for the direct stakeholders of Aki. We can ask questions and then see how best we can solve this problem. That is my personal opinion, though. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think that does it. But like doctor, um, that is it. I, from the observation of members and from the comments of members, though we have sort of divergent views, but uh, as chair, I'll just use my discretion and then agree with your submission in essence, that you be excused on this matter, as you put it. But again, in addition, you can still help us maybe with any information relevant to the subject matter. Because as you said, you are a seasoned practitioner. And then this just come to my mind. Um, uh, what do you think could have been done to avoid, avoid this unfortunate instance? And in your own personal, maybe, expertise or experience. And then what do you think are the causes of AKI, just, is just in general. Thank you, Chair, and uh, once more, uh, good afternoon, honorable members. 
if not by design, if you had the word unnecessary from my end, my apologies. I'm quite sure that that is not coming from me, but I mean, once you've identified, I mean, stating that calling us here is unnecessary, I think that's an aberration, all right? Let me insist, let me insist respectfully that the subject matter you have summoned us is not within our mandate. And I want to insist that scientifically, technically, based on the content of your communication. It is not. We are not, I mean, AKI, in fact, up to now, the issue of positive correlation between the condition and the blamed products scientifically is still a subject of discussion, all right? We don't import medication. We don't regulate medications. We don't regulate even those who manage medications. Fine. If a doctor or a dentist wrongly prescribes a product that's within the practice end, the conduct end, that's our responsibility. But as we are all faced, is a national thing, as you put it. Let me share my views on this. I look at it from three vantage points. I mean, again, I mean, this is from a regulatory point of view. I mean, there are entities responsible for this. It's not, it's not our responsibility. But first and foremost, you are importing a product. Okay? You are importing a product. There are certain SOPs which you need, which should really guide you. It's a company importing a product. So you must know the profile of that company. The medication also will come with what we call profiling document, a dossier. So, knowing or attempting to ascertain the integrity of the company importing, I think that's an important step. Again, coming back to the subject matter, that's not the responsibility of Medical and Dental Council, all right? Because the argument is, if those medications did not, were not imported, we will not have had what we are experiencing. Okay, so you import the profile of the company, the medication itself, in terms of quality assurance. But there is also another sub-step in terms of regulation. This is the registration and the licensing of that medication. And in doing that, for fulfilling the responsibilities. There are also certain SOPs which needs to be undertaken, all right? Then you register, you license, the next step is distributing, the distribution. So along this chain, supply chain management, one could have prevented what has happened. But let me also hasten to add, this thing has happened. Professionally, there has been some reaction to, uh, to understand it and to take a corrective measure. And uh, yes, to do that scientifically, first you will observe, exclude, and then try to do some studies, case control, meaning to find out, okay, if you observe through observation that people using this have this reaction, so therefore you will blame what they are using, so you stop it, and then do another study. 
So the study will be, they've done it in the hospital, <coughs> case control, i.e. how many children use the medication and had the condition. It's also good to do it outside. Um, those who might have had the condition but not haven't used the, the medication. And that's also another issue. Or you will also have another cohort who used the medication and did not have the condition. So you see, these are all very important scientific nuances which need to do. Then the second, the, the third area is what we call causality. Is this product the cause of this condition? So unless and until you have that scientific rigor, it may be difficult to really align or assign. For example, when it started, um, most people were blaming paracetamol. But along the line, paracetamol was relegated to the background. We are now talking about the cough mixtures. Okay? So it, it, it needs scientific input to really come up to say really this is the cause. I'm, 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 I'm stressing the causality aspect because the causality aspect has got professional and legal implications. But coming back to where I started from, the entry of the product into the country, that should have been really, really regulated to ascertain the company and the product they were, they were bringing in. Um, once it is in, then your next step is, what am I dealing with? Is it of the required quality? And this is where you come with quality assurance. And of course, yes, uh, we do have challenges in that particular area. Then you can talk about you don't have the laboratory to do the assurance. But preventing it from entering could have, if the medication is the real positively correlated cause, could have been uh, prevented. So this would be my humble contribution uh, to the discussion. But I take the opinion of the Honorable Member and also Honorable Sise, if we go in strictly by what we've been assigned by law to do, this is not our area. This is not our area because there are regulatory authorities charged with the responsibility of managing this process. And the best, there are two of them. One is the MCA and the other one is the Pharmacy Council. Thank you. I hope, I hope it's been helpful. Or uh, thank or you. Created, created more problems <laughs> uh, because the chair, the chair is diligently looking at me, so <laughs> I need to tread very cautiously. <laughs> Otherwise, the next thing is uh, a subpoena. Eh? <laughs> thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much, Doctor. We uh, we are humble and we really appreciate your submission. That's why we have to sometimes insist at certain instances to make sure if we have. Uh, people like you within our midst, we do not waste those opportunities. But to hear from you, even on, on non-official matters, yes. because I know personally, I have been engaging with you during the last legislature. Yes. We, know, we, know, we know your capabilities and so on. So, Honorable Members, thank you very much. Not to waste much time. On behalf of the National Assembly, that is the General National Assembly, we wish to thank the Medical and Dental Council Yes, on behalf of the National Assembly, we wish to thank the Medical and Dental Council to the Registrar and also extending to the Chairman of the Council 
and then we really appreciate and then respect your position in this and then we have agreed to go by to go with you on that and then we will excuse you from this inquiry but that does not mean that we will excuse you from our side functions. No, 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 no. <laughs> yes, no. For, that, for that I have to emphasize, if you are within our, yes. within our portfolio, we will continue to engage you to make so we do the best for uh, each other from the side of the National Assembly Oversight and from, from, your, from, this, from your side as, reg as a regulatory body. So we wish to thank you and then you are humbly released. Thank you very much. Yes. Now we move on to the notices and then midwife council. The discussion have started. I know it started before. Yes, thank you. You are released. Thank you so much. The discussion have started. So let us just continue from there. Uh, like I said initially, we expected a communication, but as we explained, it was from per se, and then there was no time and most of your personnel were engaged. But nonetheless, we still give you until tomorrow okay. to communicate back to us okay. your position in this regard. But in the meantime, we can discuss also and take a position before you leave, so that you know how you leave. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Chair. Just like the Medical and Dental Council, uh, the Gambia Nurses and Midwife Council was also established by an Act of Parliament. 1989. You can see that our act is moribund, very, very old. We try to review the act, but still to no avail. Like the doctors, the uh, Medical and Dental Council, they deal with medical doctors and dentists, whereas the Gambian Nurses and Midwife Council, we deal with nurses and midwives. We regulate their education, practice, and of course training in this country, whether you are trained here locally or you are trained outside the jurisdiction of the Gambia. Once you are a nurse or a midwife, you want to practice in this country, you are regulated by the Gambia Nurses and Midwife Council. Before, when our nurses and midwives graduate, we just give them license just present their credentials, go through their, you know, papers, we give them license. But we thought that's not safe. The public would not be safe. Hence, we introduce what we call Gambia National Nurses Licensing Examination. When you graduate from your training institution, before you are given a license by the Gambia Nurses and Midwife Council, you are tested based on your competence. You have to sit to our licensing exams. If you pass, we issue with a license. If you don't pass, we don't issue with a license. All this is geared towards protecting the public. Yeah, because we don't want to release substandard laws into our communities. So that's why we have introduced some um, these licensing exams. And it is helping, it is definitely paying dividend, actually. Like Dr. Kabiru has explained, the same goes for the Gambian Nurses and Midwife Council. We don't actually regulate the practice of pharmacists or pharmacy technicians in this country. So it will be very, very difficult for us to um, at least say something regarding this, 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 this AKI, acute. Um, kidney injury. The only thing we can say, because nurses and midwives are under us, the only thing we can do or say is to ensure that our nurses and midwives practice within the ambit of the law. That's all the more reason why they are given license. Under no circumstances should a nurse or midwife practice in this country without having a valid license. If you do, it means you are contravening the Nurses and Midwife Act, which is punishable by a fine or imprisonment or both a fine and imprisonment. So you can see the, the severity of practicing without a valid 
license and we are making sure that nurses who are qualified this is why every three months we go on track we crisscross the entire length and, length and breadth of this country to ensure that nurses and midwives who are practicing are adequately licensed and registered with, with, with us. And we are all, also collaborating with employers that under no circumstances should hospitals or private clinics hire the services of nurses and midwives without them having a valid license. And that also is, is, is working very well with, with, with us. This Aki definitely has concern the Gambia Nurses and Midwives Council because our nurses and midwives directly deals with, with, with patients 24 hours around the clock. So most of these, you know, cases of, 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 of kidney problems are, are, are taken care of by, by our nurses and midwives when they are admitted in the, in the hospitals. Nurses, because of the shortage of doctors in this country, over the years, uh, nurses have been prescribing and also dispensing. Because like if you are in charge of a, a, a major health facility up country, where there is no doctor, there is no pharmacist, Honorable Mbalo can, can be a witness. Nurses have been dealing with drugs since time immemorial because there were no enough doctors in this country and no enough pharmacists in this country. But now that the pharmacy council uh, are trying to train more pharmacists, I think with time we are going to you know, do away with nurses prescribing and then, and then dispensing. I think those are some of the things um, I want to highlight. Thank you very much. That way. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Dabo. We appreciate your submission too. And honorable members, I think we all had it together. It's a similar case with that of the nursing, nursing and midwife. Sorry, medical and dental council. So I think the same can be applied. I'm not preempting though, but. Maybe if I, if I can hear from you. Yeah, 
messages are being coming to that facility, they are being terrified. The messages that are coming to them, they are not taking the medicine. And how do you see if this has caused another medical problem that a lot of bodies is coming back here to facility because of this thing? So I think out of your mandate, you have something to say on this. Yeah. I, 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 I think it means. But if you legally look at it in a legal uh, uh, point of view, mm -hmm. yeah, you can talk. But to me, what you and the ministry at the Central Council, out of legal proposal, you have to mandate to take down and something about it. Well, Chairman. Yes, thank you very much, Honorable. Again, your submission is well respected. Uh, we understand the angle at which you are coming from. But uh, let us just remember, we are having our terms of references. And uh, any evidence that we receive here, at the end of the day, we have to put it in the form of report and present it to the National Assembly. And then um, any stakeholder that we invite here, we put we observe the necessary procedure and pr uh, processes to make sure you put you under oath and anything you said here we are not inviting them as maybe prof as uh, nurses professionals or doctors professionals but we are inviting you as a council so if the council have no position in this as you stated please make it categorically clear to us but as a as a professional nurse been, uh, who have practice in the end island and bread of the country, if you have anything to say in your professional capacity to make sure you enrich our investigation, the floor is open and you are welcome to do so. Yes, but as far as the position of the council is concerned with law, with regulations, definitely we'll have no option but to excuse you from this and continue with other stakeholders. Unless maybe if you have any other thing to say. All right. Um, thank you very much. I think uh, both uh, Mr. Dabo and uh, the previous speakers have already talked about the mandate. Uh, however, from the other perspective that uh, Honorable Mbalo has just uh, raised, uh, that would have been an issue more for the association, the nurses association, nurses and midwives association to deal with, because they are dealing with welfare of the nurses. So, but uh, just to look at it from that point of view, what has uh, happened is really very difficult. And uh, it has also added uh, to the difficulties that uh, nurses and midwives are facing in their general work. Because if someone comes to you with that expectation that you know you could do something to alleviate his or her suffering, and here you are prescribing something or telling that individual, this is, take this or take that, and that person has some doubts, it makes the work very difficult and very challenging for the personnel to be, uh, provide care. And uh, it's not only at that level, but we also have all the external fa factors. And uh, they are also making life very difficult for you know, the nurses and all the other health workers in general, which is, of course, the social media. A lot of information is going around which is not very helpful and is not helping the profession, is not helping us as a country also at the end of the day. So maybe t for us, we d really don't have any control over those areas, but I think it's an area that we also, if as a country need to look at to see how do we regulate the, you know, this uh, circling of fake news, fake information, or information that people cannot really uh, uh, scientifically prove that this is the case. You did mention position, and Dr. Cham already alluded to some of the issues that surround some of the positions. 
because in order for you to categorically say that you know a plus b equals c c is the aki at the moment you must be really sure of what the a and the things that surround a and things that surround b uh, to, to be able to definitively say that C is the outcome. But where that evidence is not there, it's very difficult you know, to come out to say scientifically that this is the situation. And that is the, uh, the position that we are facing at the moment. So at best, you know, it's just working. Uh, at the moment, is be, be, uh, what we are uh, going by is the directives that are being received. So f suppose, uh, for example, Ministry of Health would come in and uh, make a, a, a directive. Do not give this medication. Withdraw all of these medications, and those are the things we go by. And if there are other uh, uh, directives that are there, you know, that could help the practice, then we definitely will be going by that, those practices. But as of now, as a body, nurses and midwives, it's difficult to really come out because the evidence that you need to you know, uh, say for certain that this is, this is definitely not available as we speak. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Yaron. Thank you very much. So, and the regulatory aspect. Have your members, because since they are responsible of managing some of these cases at the hospitals, have they ever approached you on this matter? Um, because uh, I think uh, one of the uh, members of staff just concluded, I think, was it last week? Yeah, Trek last week. Uh, he went you know, uh, throughout the country, and uh, we've not yet received any report from him. So, but uh, with them also at the level of the office, maybe he should be able to inform this uh, August body if they have received any official, you know, complaint from the nurses and midwives in the country. That's suffice. So, thank you very much. It's been a long day. And then, as I said earlier, we appreciate your uh, response to all our questions and concerns. And we okay. still looking forward for tomorrow to be receiving that official communication because we want to attach it as part of our report as evidence. Because we're going to go to plenary and tell them, ah, no citizen midwife council, they said they should be exempted from this. If a member asks you what is the evidence that that you can provide. So we need that, and then we need those evidences to attach them in our reports. Okay. So on that note, we thank you all, and then on behalf of the National Assembly, we thank you, and then extend our thanks and appreciation to the entire council, as you know, it's only by council, and we look forward to be working with you on our routine oversight functions. So on that note, you are released. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Make sure the camera is on. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I do I who was streaming? Is still on? Say is still. Can we get it now? No, of course. So, how do you remember? That does it for today. And I think tomorrow we are having the victims association in the morning, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. 11. Eh? Victims 11. 11. Then yeah, in the press Gambia Press Union in the afternoon. So mm -hmm. tomorrow, yes. Okay, please, 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 mother.
Mike is fun.